Okay, this is lesson 6.6. .6. I'm going to give this a shot. We're going to try and have you just take notes today while I'm not here by watching the video. If at any point you need to stop the video or rewind it, just let your guest teacher know and she'll back it up for you or he'll back it up for you, whoever it is. Um, so here we go. This lesson is on solving linear, or excuse me, systems of linear inequalities. It's just like what you've been doing. Now it's just going to put two inequalities on the same graph. So here's problem one. Copy it down in your notebook. Make yourself a coordinate grid. And then we'll go on. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause now so that you can get that written down. OK, I'm going to graph the first inequality just like I would graph any equation or any other inequality that we've already worked on by looking first at the beginning point. The beginning point is negative 3. And the slope is 2, which means 2 over 1. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Now, 2 points is great, but the more points you put on your graph, the more accurate your line will be. And because this inequality is less than and not equal to, the line that you draw is going to be a dotted line. Oops, that's not a line. A dotted line. And then to shade, because every inequality has shading, I'm going to test the point 0, 0. 0, 0. And if 0, 0 works, I'll shade this side. And if 0, 0 doesn't work, then I'll shade this side. So I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, and I get 0 is less than 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 3 is minus 3. 0 is less than negative 3. Is that true? No, it's not true, so I'm going to shade this side of the inequality. Next, I'm going to graph the second inequality. And you'll notice this inequality is written in standard form. So to graph a standard form equation, I'll use the finger trick to find the x and y intercept. First, I'll cover up the x to find that the y intercept is 2. Then I'll cover up the y to find that the x intercept is, divide both sides by 2, x equals 1. Now, I've got two points, and they're really close together, and that's OK, except I won't make a very good line that way. So another trick is to look at the two points and figure out that the slope is to go up 2, back 1. So I'll do that again, up 2, back 1, up 2, back 1, and do that a whole bunch of times so that I get a really accurate line. And like the first inequality, this is strictly greater than, not equal to, so that the line I draw is going to be a dotted line. And once again, I'm going to test a point with 0, 0. I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, and I get 0 is greater than 2. 0 is not greater than 2, so I shade the other side of the line. And now the solution for this system of inequalities is where the two lines cross. And it's easy to see if you take a highlighter and highlight all of that. So after you've graphed both inequalities, you'll get a region where the two inequalities cross. If you have a highlighter, that works great. If you don't have a highlighter, if you take your pencil and just make that region darker, it makes it really easy and really obvious to tell where your solution is. Okay, so let's try a second problem. I'm going to put it up for you to do on your own. So I'll have the guest teacher pause the video now. You can write it down, work it out, and then when you're all done, you can hit play again and see the solution. All right, like the last equation, there are, or last system, there are two inequalities. I'm going to graph the first one. It has a beginning point of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the slope is negative 1. So I'm going to go down 1 over 1. And I'm going to do that a whole bunch of times so that I get a really accurate line. This inequality has an or equal to. 
So the line is going to be solid. I'm going to test the point zero, zero. Put zero in for X and zero in for Y. Zero is greater than or equal to five, which is not true. So I'm going to shade the other side. Next, I'm going to graph the second inequality. And like the last one, it's a standard form, so I'm going to find the x and y intercept. So I cover up the x, and the y intercept is negative 4. Now, when I cover up the y to find the x intercept, I notice that this is going to be kind of an ugly fraction. So one trick that we learned a while back is that the slope of a standard form equation is negative a over b. And if at this point you're going, oh, I don't remember all that, an option for you might be to solve this equation for y, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it the way I started it. So in this problem, the a is negative 3, so it's equal to the opposite of negative 3. The b is 1. So my slope for this line is the opposite of negative 3, which is positive 3 over 1. So I can just go right to the point that I put on the y-axis and go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, and keep doing that a whole bunch of times to get a really accurate line. Again, this is a equal to, so you're going to get a solid line when you graph it. And then I'm going to test the point zero, 0, So let me get rid of some of this stuff you, so you can see what I'm doing. I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, and I get 0 plus 0 is less than negative 4. Is 0 less than negative 4? Nope. So I don't shade this side, but I shade the other side. And where the green and red lines intersect is the solution. to the inequality system. OK, one more problem, and it's a story problem. Now, in the last lesson, you learned how to write an inequality from a story problem, and it looked very similar to this one. And if you remember, it was a story problem about your mom giving your money for a party. Well, in this problem, she gives you another $100 for another party, but this time pizzas are going to cost you $10 each, and pop is $5 per case. Now, if I just gave you this much, it would be the same type same type of problem where you'd write one inequality. But if I add in additional information like this, now it makes it a system of inequalities. So let me just work you through it. Do your best to understand it. Try the story problems on the assignment today, and if you're completely confused, then we'll work it out when I get back. So in this problem, you're going to first define the variables x and y. You're going to let x be the number of pizzas, just like the last problem we did. And y is going to be the number of cases of pop. You're going to write in the value a pizza cost, $10. Pop costs, $5. And you can write an equation just like the last story problem. It's $10 per pizza plus $5 per pop. Your mom gives you $100, so can you spend more than 100 No, you've got to spend all of the money equal to 100 or less than 100 That's the first inequality. Now, this information in the middle, at least six pizzas and at least four cases, this is giving you two more inequalities. At least means you have to buy six pizzas or more. So I'm going to take the number of pizzas, x, and I'm going to write an inequality that says I've got to buy more than or equal to 6. And I'm going to take the number of cases of pop, y, and write another inequality that says I have to buy more than or equal to 4. So now you have a system that has three different inequalities. OK, don't freak out. I know you haven't seen one like this before, but I'm going to keep going. Try your best. 
Now I'm going to graph it. And I'm going to graph it like I did the last example. We let the X be the pizzas and the Y be the pop. I'm going to go by twos on the x-axis. And twos on the y-axis. These two inequalities you've done before. These are just horizontal and vertical lines. So when I graph x is greater than or equal to 6, that's just a vertical line through x is equal to 6. That means I have to buy more than 6 pizzas. So all of the numbers greater than 6 are all the numbers on this side of the line. And the equation y is greater than 4 is just a horizontal line through 4. That means I have to buy... more than four cases of pop. So everything above this line. All right, so, so far my solution is this area where the black and red lines cross. But I've got one more inequality and that's this one. So it's a standard form. So if I use the X and Y intercepts or the finger trick, I can figure out that the X intercept is Divide both sides by 10, I get x is 10. And if I cover up the x to find the y-intercept, divide both sides by 5, I get y is equal to 20. And if I draw that line, stay with me, All that line, it's going to look like that. <laughs> this is probably really confusing for you. All the shading goes this way so that your answer is just this region right here. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. Here are your problems. These are pretty straightforward for you to graph. These are the story problems. Try them. Try every single one. At least get a linear system written for the story problems and then try to graph them. And if what you what you can't get done, I will help you with when I get back.